कॉल ओके ठीक है आई विल नीड टू सेट अप फेसबुक लाइव तो आई विल टेक अप्रोक्सीमेटली वन मिनट क्योंकि उस वहां कुछ डालना पड़ता है ना या 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 I will go live stream. How are you? Ha. Huh. Let's let's first talk. I wanted to, you know, feel that comfort before we go live. वो एक बनना चाहिए between speaker and host. एक कैसे हो? वो आना चाहिए. मैं ठीक हूँ. आप कैसे हो? कहाँ हो आप? वहीं. मैं साकरे में ही हूँ. कहाँ पे? जब आप कब आने वाले हो? Croatia. I should take this and come. इसके बाद बात करते हैं। देखो अभी मेरा पता नहीं है, ठिकाना नहीं है, क्या है, क्या नहीं। अब मेरे को अपना प्रोग्राम बताओ उसके मुताबिक बनाएंगे। हम भी बहुत बिजी बिजी हैं। तो बैठ के डिजाइन किया, too much man. अभी तो ये मेरा काम हो गया है ना। Wait, I need to also put heading। नहीं नहीं, इतना भी difficult नहीं है। But where is it? हाँ, learn the body language। मैंने white कुर्ता निकाल के पहना sleeveless के बजाय मेरे को sleeveless doesn't look nice on the screen। ज़्यादा लगता है। Shows more. Yeah, it shows more than it is. Yes. A coat pen ne ka mausam nahi hai. It's too hot. I'm sure. I'm sure. Mumbai ki halak karave sab soon rahi ho mein. Mujhe yaan 22 degree mein bhi lag rahi hai. Karmi lag rahi hai. To fir kya bolu? Anyways, I generally feel heat more than others. So, okay, join us with Chantpani Anumaita, Master Trainer. All right. Okay, line the language of body. Ho gaya, ye, aka heading ha gaya. Share on my timeline. I think that is okay. पेज पे शेयर करूं या लेट मी शेयर ऑन द पेज दिस टाइम पर पता नहीं है मेरा नहीं है नहीं है नहीं है पेज नहीं है शेयर ऑन माय टाइमलाइन पब्लिक ओके आई एम गोइंग लाइव मनु ओके ओके आई एम गोइंग लाइव बट आई विल आल्सो नीड टू शेयर द लिंक विद अदर्स so that will take me one minute because I need to share the link with Facebook community and others who wants to join us. Yes. So give me a minute to share the link before we go live. <laughs> it's a very interesting topic. Yeah, I just thought it's better than talking just meta health. It is meta health, yet not programmed like that. Yeah. So I know we are live, but I'm just sharing on few groups. Yeah. So give me a minute more. Yes, thank you. 
We're ready to start. Thank you, Anu. Thank you so much for joining this uh, event. And uh, I'm sure it will help a lot of people to understand their body better. So let's welcome Dr. Anumetta. She is a Metta. Am I saying it right? Is it pronounced Metta or Metta? Metta. Yeah, she is first master trainer for Metta Health and Maxtrim Matrix Reprinting, as well as Advanced Cleaning Energetic India. She is family consteller, shadow consteller, and art based therapist. She is speaker, author, and uses lesser colors for diagnostic. She uses NES Health Bioenergetic System to restore energy and health. I think my entire session will go today. Asking you to explain your introduction. Okay, let me first simplify uh, by asking you why, why is this um, important to learn the language of your body? Because, you know, this is, I'm sure it is not something that is being talked about in personality development, that your body language, that's a different concept. And what you're trying to say is really different. So let me first ask you, what do you mean by learning body language? First of all, thank you so much, Jane, for inviting me for this and uh, talk show. I am really uh, eager to talk about this topic. When I'm talking about body language today, I'm saying, what's happening to your body? Are you listening to your body? It's mm -hmm. constantly talking. Our body is constantly saying something to us. Are we even listening to it? Like if I'm wearing this spectacles like you are, yes. it's become such a common body language. Yes. For anyone and everyone to wear spectacles. Mm. Have you even understood what it's saying? Mm. So, and that's not, that's just one tip of the iceberg. There's so many things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I said. Let's learn what our body is trying to talk to us, say to us. And it's got its own language. If we master that language, we might be able to look at our life differently. So can we recover from health issues if we start listening to our body? Yes, we can. Okay. Can you share some words like what is language that body, body uh, wants to say us? I mean, okay. what are some terminologies that one should focus on? If they want to learn body language. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's first just look at the word body. Hmm. So what does the body say? B-O-D-Y. Let's spell it other way around. Four words. We've all played the word game. Yeah. How about taking it as D-O-B-Y? Mm -hmm. Where D means date of birth. With a year attached to it. That's your body. Your mm -hmm. body already comes with a date of birth and a year attached to it. That means you're not going to be here forever. And yet, how do we live our life? As if everything is going to be there with us forever, ever, and ever. And how much pain do we create because, oh, our body is not going to remain. We are going to, we're going to die or mm -hmm. we're not going to be there. Then we're talking about, let's say, the word like disease. Mm -hmm. Let's break down the word disease. When do we say we are diseased? When do we go to the doctor? When we have some we the... problem. When we right. actually experience it and it becomes sometimes not tolerable till the time we may avoid also. Right. I mean, and let me put it my way. I absolutely. Would avoid it absolutely. The last... I love it. Yeah. I love that you're putting that input because um, we do not go to the doctor till we are, we can't take it anymore. Hmm. What is it that we can't take anymore? Is the discomfort. 
not being at ease. Mm -hmm. With what? Is your body giving you discomfort first? Or was your mind giving you discomfort first? That's interesting way to think so at it, yes. Yeah. So something was happening in our environment mm -hmm. where we are given feet to walk. We are given hands to do things. We're given a mouth to talk and express. Our body can express. But maybe we are not doing any of this. Maybe we are waiting for someone or somebody to push us to do something. To take an action. Hmm. And when the discomfort becomes so grave that it turns into pain, it turns into inflammation, it turns into physical discomfort is when you go to the doctor. Hmm. And would you go and tell the doctor, something is wrong with me. Hmm. And that's what you call a disease. So hmm. in my, in my ma mind, when you're going to the doctor, you've already got symptoms. Now let's look at the word symptom. Yeah. Symptom is something that I can see. Hmm. So I'm going and telling the doctor, my arm is paining. Hmm. My hair is falling. I can't see. So I need something. Or oh, there's a bump here. There are pimples here. Something that I can see, I call it a symptom. Hmm. But Jane, what is more difficult to deal with is the hidden symptoms. The part that we cannot see, the part that begins before the symptom begins. So mm -hmm. just wanted to bring these few terminologies into being and understanding now, that our body is always knocking. Now this is much more complex. Earlier, <laughs> earlier okay, it was just one way to understand that body says something. But I think what you are saying is further layers down. Yes, so pain doesn't just mean pain, but it means more than that. Can, can you tell me more about uh, what does it mean? Say, if I say I have headache, what does it mean? Okay. Uh, it basically means that you have, and we can look at even in headache, there are various varieties. But let's look at in the headache, let's assume you've got migraine. Mm hmm can you break down the word migraine? What does the word migraine mean to you? Split mm. the word migraine. What would yeah. that mean to you? Yeah, it as such means food items that we... Is it so? Okay. What if we were not looking at it as a food item and saying something that belongs to me? Migraine. My way of doing things. Okay. Hmm. My, my way of dealing with stuff. Hmm. And what may be your way of doing? Where is it showing up? Here. Mm -hmm. This part is connected with intellect. So your pain mm -hmm. is saying you're trying to intellectually do things in your way. And maybe mm -hmm. you're going against the wave. Mm -hmm. Maybe the way you want to do things is not something that's easy. It's not something that has been the normal way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So could that be causing a lot of conflict within you? Mm -hmm. Like, let me give you an example. The person wants to rest. Mm -hmm. But her values, migraine, her values, her way of being is, oh, if she rests, then she will not be taking responsibility for something. Mm. She may not be completing something in time, which means somebody is going to suffer because she didn't do things the way others wanted her to do. Though she mm. thinks she's satisfying other people or doing things for other people, actually she's not making anyone responsible. But if you turn it around mm. and say, what will happen if you did allow others to pitch in? Mm -hmm. And not some people will say, oh, that means somebody will learn how to do things. 
Hmm. Or are you saying that somebody will become responsible? And hmm. is it so difficult for you to do it? Look, hmm. I'm trying to make it like just breaking the words. It can get very complex. But what I'm trying to tell you is that in the language that is used to describe something, the part that is used to describe something and say, oh, that's where it is. Hmm. Even a small child will tell you, this is the place from where we think. Mm. yeah yeah so we we aren't listening so is it like each body part says something or it is like each kind of pain says something or is it something else that i i don't understand both both mm -hmm. pains are saying something body parts are saying something mm. so if you Bring up a certain paths, maybe we can translate it further. Would okay. you like to do that? I randomly started with head. Probably we can go to neck. I mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the neck. What do you do, Jane, with your neck? Yes. It's what would you do with moving, your neck? Moving, looking around and other internal organs. Yes. That helps okay, so me. Eating, up. breathing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I can look up, I yeah. can look sideways, I can look down. Hmm. Right, I can do a yeah. lot of movement around my neck. And then hmm. obviously, like you said, many organs passing through. Yeah. Can we say that neck is the part which is connecting the brain on the top and the heart below? Yes, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So... <clears throat> And most of us Indians are known to do this. I do this quite often, don't you? Mm. I am doing it now also, yes. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? We are constantly saying yes to someone. Mm. We are constantly making them believe that we are listening to them. We are that they are trying to say we agree, kind of. Absolutely. Yeah. That we agree with what? Mm. We agree with you. Yeah. And if we look at the songs that are sung in the Bollywood, what's that song? Sar kata sakte hain lekin mm -hmm. sar juka sakte nahi. This yes. is something that happened during the freedom fight. What's yeah. that? Let me translate it for people who don't understand Hindi. Yes, please. I, I cannot bend my neck. I can get my neck cut, cut. but I will not bend my neck in front of anyone. Mm -hmm. I want freedom for my country. Mm -hmm. But didn't we translate this to everything in our life? Yeah. And almost we are cutting our necks because of this. Interesting. Wow. The humbleness, the humbleness is in knowing when to be able to do down. And this is what we do in front of God. We, we put our head down. Hmm. This is what we do in front of our loved ones, in front of our elders, in our culture. Hmm. We put our head down. We are not, we are not becoming small because of that. Hmm. But somewhere our heart and our head says, intellect is saying, don't do it. Hmm. And heart is saying, they are my loved ones. I need to respect them. Yes. The whole fight between my respect, the how much I want to respect, how I want to respect. Hmm. And what my intellect is telling me. Mm. So, yeah. just that it brings up that one body part when it's struggling. It's obvious it's struggling because you are in a conflict. That gives me another question. If somebody yes. realizes that, you know, this is happening to them, does the pain go away or it stays with them? as a physical symptom as well? Thank you for that question. It's really, somebody wants to lose weight. Somebody wants to become rich. Hmm. What do they have to do, Jane? Just by knowing I want to become rich, hmm. just by becoming aware that I want to stand first, yeah. I want to become Miss India, will that happen? No, it will not. It has to translate into an action. Mm. 
and only and only when we create the action hmm. after the decision that we take, then that body part says, say, now I can rest. And the body will take yeah. about six weeks for that pain to ease off. So there are some actions required for six weeks or you have to if you surrender? Do not, no. If you do not trigger yourself again. Okay. That Which means is, conflict yeah. has to end <laughs> within you. Hmm. That requires tr transformation in our belief system, in in the way we approach not just us, others. That requires like 360 degree change in in whatever we uh, perceive as right or wrong. Absolutely, Jane. We change our perceptions, hmm. change our stories, and our history changes. What do you mean by ch it changes our history? I'm I'm a little stuck there. You break the word history, it's his story. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I change, if if we were to change those stories, change the understanding around those stories, mm -hmm. change the understanding around what is respect, what is actually kneeling down under someone, what is actually sir putting your head down does not always mean that oh, you're being disrespected. Sometimes you do it out of love. Hmm. Not every action of yours has to be in the same way of thinking. When we have fixed way and a fixed image of ourselves, that's when the problems arise. Hmm. If we give up on a fixed way of doing things and find alternate backup plans, find another way, be flexible. And the minute we are flexible, our life becomes more flexible. What do you mean by alternate plan? Alternate plan is that are you going to always keep thinking that, oh, if I am, if my father has scolded me today, mm -hmm. that means he's disrespecting me. Could mm. it be that he was lovingly, mm. maybe sternly, but actually in his mind, he is preparing you for a bigger world. Could it be possible that you were not putting your head down to him in a surrender, but in respect? He's not saying you have to do everything, but mm. that's how we take it to be. We are looking at it probably as, oh, I have to surrender. Hmm. How about having another understanding? A plan means another understanding or resources to create that. If you can't do it, how about having a good communication with your father and say, hey, you know what? I really like what you said, but maybe probably it's not possible for you. We are not authentic. We are not honest. We hold these grudges in our body. We embody them. We hold and then these grudges in our body. Yes. Whatever mind is trying to say, it is stored in body in some form. Yes, and that's why I can't move. All right. Okay. Yes. I can't move. I have only one fixed way. I have only, mm. I cannot move my neck completely. I cannot move my neck up or look down. Mm. Think about it. What does looking down mean to you? What does looking up mean yeah. to you? Yes. Why are you exactly. losing the movement of your neck? Mm -hmm. what is your neck saying to you oh you want to have a fixed way of thinking let's give you a fixed way of moving your neck this is your body and let it be that way yeah it's an adjustment that this is very Make your life comfortable very profound. yes uh you you mentioned about history i think yes. many people have uh, trauma in their life Yes. And probably from their family members. Yes. And, uh, does it, uh, how, how do they deal with such situation? It's uh, so very delicate because it's a family member. It's not someone yes. who is outsider. So yes. how do one manage themselves with such situation? Um, a, we have to look at the individual case. But mm -hmm. if I was to look at it as a broad spectrum right now, 
Mm. And look at relationships and look at, again, the example that we were looking at before. Uh, mm. The first thing was to, first thing for us would be to understand what is the trauma that you're feeling with that person? When did the onset of that trauma happen with that person? Hmm. So again, let's take an example of um, people moving from Pakistan to India. Hmm. Okay. What happened during that time? They got uprooted. Yes. And they carried that uprooted feeling as a trauma in their body. Hmm. Now, let's say at that time they had neighbors who were very friendly. But during that trauma, it's about survival. And there mm -hmm. was mass survival going on. Yeah. Like everybody was trying to save their family, their loved ones or themselves. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to extend an arm maybe to this one person as they were doing before. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Just because now they are not extending the arm to you in the same way, you might look at it and say, oh, my neighbor, I can't trust him anymore. Before, he was like differently. Or let's say within the family, which was a big family, it gets broken into small fragments like this because people had to hold their children, their wife, their money and run. Mm -hmm. So remember, when trauma hits anyone, Ask yourself, do you have first, what resource is it that you don't have? How is it, where is it that you're feeling in your body this connection that's going, mm -hmm. floating everywhere? So these connections can mm -hmm. go off at four different levels. So this emotion stays in the body, probably till the time you do something to take it out from your body. Is it so? Not just emotion, not just emotion. No. Emotion is a Even part physical. of it. Okay. Even physically, your body changes. Amazing. Yes. Okay. I know I have a uh, something that comes up in my mind. Yeah. You know, is it for human or does it happen to animals also? Because they probably have many more traumas like you know, okay, I'm not talking about our, the animal that we take care of, but some, uh, some of them who are in jungle, how do they experience it? Is it impacting them as well? Or it is just two humans? Okay. okay. Let's look at the dogs on the road. We call them Indies. Mm -hmm. And then let's compare them to the dogs at home. Yeah. I have a golden retriever, so I have a little knowledge about it more mm -hmm. on a practical level. Mm -hmm. The strays on the road aren't pampered. There is nobody giving them vaccination, nobody seeing that they can get food three times a day. They are born and they are on the road, which means the traumas are happening right from the time the baby is born. Six of mm -hmm. them being born together, they have to start competing right then for everything to survive. It's about survival, remember? The lowest on the Maslow's triangle for food they have to fight for sustaining themselves they have to fight to have a shelter they have to fight so there are traumas on various levels that will happen mm -hmm. there is a dog at home okay. you would take care of him you would take him to a vet you would give him food you will pamper him you will try taming him and in the process you will give him your conflicts you are trying to do okay. You're trying to carry the child. He becomes the child of the family or she becomes yeah. the child of the family. And in the process, you're telling them, no, hmm. very good boy. This is how <laughs> we are training them. Yes. There is an Indy on the road. Nobody's telling, very good boy. Hmm. The Indy learns how to fight with other dogs, the pack of dogs. Yeah. And among all the traumas, the alpha is going to make it for the longest. The alpha dog is the one okay. who can sustain himself. Okay. It is at home. For you, your dog is an alpha dog. Pampered brat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the traumas that are happening are very different. And if I was to take this further to human beings, 
let's go and look at the children who are in the in the shanties children who don't have resources hmm. versus our kids who have resources but their conflicts are different conflict and stress is part of life hmm. it's not about the conflict and the stress that's only external it's also about the internal uh, predisposition that we are born with how did our forefathers deal with it so uh, indeed even if it's brought home and tamed will mm -hmm. still have an aggressive side because that's what helped him to survive for so long. It's still more difficult to tame because mm -hmm. they were never supposed to be tamed. They were supposed to survive in the wild. Yes, yes. These days we uh, listen more cases about PCOD or uh, weight gain, obesity. Is it also to do with some transition as a human that we experiences last few decades absolutely other than I mean, food factor food yes has changed big time but is there a mental factor as well absolutely let's take pcos it's not called pcod anymore oh, yes. I, I, okay. it's called a syndrome and the yeah. difference is that syndrome means many symptoms together hmm. and no predictable symptom altogether for someone, they'll say, oh, you're very fat and so you have PCOS. But somebody very thin can also have PCOS. So just explaining that first. Okay. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Hmm. Poly means many. Cysts, where do they exist? In the ovary where the eggs are there. The ovas have become big hmm. and become cystic. Cystic means they have got filled with fluid and become hard like the egg is there you have mm. the hard shell outside like this it can mm. be very painful now it's full of hormone mm. what are we talking here is how many girls during our mom's time and our grandmom's time were going yes. out and working yeah very slim what were they supposed to do they were supposed to use those eggs to make children mm. today by the age of 27, our grandmothers probably had completed their family. Mm. Today, age of 27, girls are still making their career. Mm. And they're studying. And we tell them, don't worry. We'll give you all the support. But the body says, hey, your priority is not to make children. Your priority is to make your career. Hmm. So let me do the adjustment. Let me put them in the cysts so that you don't make children, even if you try. Okay. Okay. And plus it's full of hormone. Like hmm. there are different stages of the cyst. It can be small and it can grow big, depending on which stage it is in. It's filled with estrogen. So what is it doing? What is that estrogen doing? Making her look more feminine. But when it's not filled with estrogen, she is more masculine. Hmm. Okay. She's getting more female because she's searching for a partner. Hmm. But in today's world, we are not searching for a partner to make a baby, but we're searching for a partner to make a business. Hmm. So true. when something becomes redundant, it's not required. In evolution, it loses the functionality of mm -hmm. that area. So we need to really observe. I mean, yes, we. I, I like working. You like working. And I'm sure my daughter likes working. And many, many, many women like working. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we need to then understand that we need to accept that there are adjustments that are going to happen which are then labeled as disease. It's an adjustment, not a disease. Hmm. I hope that it, makes sense. Of course, it's really deep. And uh, I, I mean, you know, evolution is changing us. And sometimes it's scary also. Anything that uh, is also particular to body shapes? Yes. Like somebody has thin body, healthy body, shapes are different. So 
you know, maybe this part is heavier than the bottom part. Does it also signify something? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's say someone has very heavy shoulders, mm -hmm. very big shoulders, and often with big shoulders, you'll find them having very, uh, very heavy upper arms. Yeah. Hmm. Why would you need that adjustment? Why would someone need an adjustment to have heavy shoulders? Can you think of it? No, I can at think of with you in last half an hour. Maybe because they require more to put on their shoulders. They have more responsibilities. Yeah, you're getting it. So, I'm getting it. <laughs> so the person is shouldering. Hmm. And they are, they have too much on their plate. Hmm. Most of the times in my observation is that they have lost a parent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they need to become very, like, carry the responsibility of the house. Hmm. Hmm. And in the process... Hmm. The area that really looks big is this area. This is interesting. I'm thinking of such people. And yeah, I, I mean, I can think of few people that I know have this. Okay. Yes. And, then let's look at, uh, yeah. can you give me another one? Maybe we can work um, what you might be interested in. Maybe neck, which is swollen. So neck swollen could be many things. It could be a thyroid problem that's going on. Also thyroid, I think I want to talk about that also. Why is thyroid so much on rise these days and uh, somehow autoimmune disease also is uh, popular these days because they are not, body is not able to produce thyroid. Why, why is it so much on rise? Let's first complete the body shapes and then I'll come to okay. thyroid. Yes. Hmm. Let's pause. Somebody who has very big butts, Mm. Very big hits. Yes. Mm. There was a whole research done in anthropology mm -hmm. where women who had to produce a lot of children mm. needed to have yeah. bigger hips so that they could easily produce children. Is it Com why some community have uh, uh, bigger than the others yes it's cultural cultural okay cultural in the sense some communities are going to tell yes. you that mm -hmm. making a child is more important all right and it stays in the genes or it stays it goes from one generation to another the search the thought has got has altered your physiology even if it it's is not like relevant now it still stays in the genes Yes, uh, think of it, uh, Jane, if there was a well and we were taking a small thread and rubbing on the side of the of the well, there's this nice concrete um, wall and this mm -hmm. thread, a very thin thread is rubbing on it. And yeah. we've rubbed it for, let's say, more than 100 times, 200 times, yeah. 500 times. A small thin thread can create a mark on that concrete wall, a small invisible thought of ours can create that adjustment. Well, I was thinking the thread will break off in some some right. attempts. You know, I, I was thinking it like that. No? Yes, it can. It depends on what if you continue to bring another thread and do the same. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the thought pattern is the same. Right. The thought yeah. pattern is that I have to do this again and again. It's a repetition. Hmm. Now, let's look at someone who has got uh, very big breasts. Hmm. It's about nurturing. What are the breasts required for? To feed a little baby. Hmm. So, if you compare it to many, many uh, cultures where women are very yeah. lean on the crop. Yeah. If you go back and look at the world wars that happened. Mm. Could they have stood there and nurtured the children or did they have to go out yeah. and take care 
of something else. Mm -hmm. So you lose a part or you gain a part because you're using it oh, in generations. There's in a generations. thought pattern in generations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen in one minute. Nothing happens in one minute. Buddha said, mm -hmm. and it's so interesting, everything that you're seeing right now started from a thought pattern. And so many people then added yes. to it. <laughs> okay. So many people added to it to create what is there today. Hmm. So uh, I think we can go to thyroid from here. We can jump yes. to thyroid. Yes, please. Thyroid is a small butterfly, butterfly-like shaped mm -hmm. gland, which is here in the neck. Hmm. Okay. To me, the butterfly feels like transformation from being a caterpillar, something mm -hmm. ugly, to something as beautiful as a but butterfly. Mm -hmm. What is the whole cycle signifying? That you need to adjust and change till you have and accept yourself completely. Mm -hmm. Let's break down the word thyroid. Hi, T-H-Y. Can we look at it as Shakespearean English and say thy? Roid. Yeah. Yeah. Thyroid and look at it as thy right inside my body. That's connecting mm -hmm. with my ID. That's my identity. The right mm -hmm. in my body, the conflict in my body around my identity. So let me take you further from here. A lot of women today and men today are saying, hey, I want to do that fast. Mm -hmm. I want to do that fast. I will lose out numbers. The boss is saying, there's a number. Give mm -hmm. it to me. And you're sitting down saying, I haven't done it. My, my somebody else has got that promotion. I didn't get it. Somebody else has reached there. I didn't get it. Mm. In that process, you need more of the thyroid. You need more of the thyroid. You will get hyperthyroid. Mm. And you'll become absolutely thin. Mm. You'll become brilliant. You'll mm. look at it and you'll say, hey, what the hell? What, what, what really happened? Mm. Okay. And in the similar way, if mm -hmm. I was, uh, let's say, I'm continuously going on. I'm continuously going on stretching myself like mm -hmm. an elastic. You're going to reach a place where you're going to be in a hypo now from a hyper stage because your body cannot cope up with your speed. The hyper and the hypo, the thyroid gives you the speed to do something. It takes mm -hmm. away that speed. So you slow down because that's what your body needs you to do. Slow down and along with that, you gain weight because your metabolism has now slowed down. So when we are not able to create the changes or the transformation that is required by us in our psyche, our body adjusts so that we can slow down when it's telling us slow down. Yeah. Slow down. So the idea is not to overdo anything or underdo anything. The idea is to gain balance. So body finds its way to balance it. Body shows you that you are imbalanced. And this cannot can be reversed as well. If you change your speed. Okay. It, it will take time. It doesn't happen overnight. I had socially I no. It didn't take you one minute to make that okay. thyroid. Yes. It isn't going to reverse in one minute. Yes. And why is it more common with women than men? Very good. So I spoke about identity and thyroid. Yeah. My identity and the, the conflict is around my identity. There was a whole study done where the animals were put in cages. Mm. And then they were released. You know, all these animals were experimented on. And then they were released. Yeah. They couldn't come out of the cages. They could not. They stayed there. Okay. They stayed there. Now I'm going to compare this metaphor to women. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Mm. And even when the doors are open and I know I can walk. Yeah. How many of us, even so-called empowered ones, take yeah. those actions? Mm -hmm. And do what we really want to do. Either we get too male, there's no balance there. Mm -hmm. And many of us, 
when we get our freedom, it's a bit too late. Mm. Got so used to those cages mm. that that cage becomes our safety place. This is really profound and it will it will take, I think, much more introspection for someone to come out of it. I think I can go on and on with you, Anu. It is uh, such an interesting topic and uh, I'm, I'm getting hooked to understanding more about body and how body can heal itself, how metaphor health can be used and uh, probably take your support uh, on some of the things that, that sounds not so easy. Um, anything else that you, you want to say? Because I have many things, but I think let me ask you if you want to share anything that is useful to listeners. I will first share about the healing bit and then we'll yes. talk at it. Yes. The first bit to any healing is awareness. Mm. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Kwesi, says we are spiritually blind. Mm. Which means we may be able to see from our eyes outside, mm. but we're not able to see how our internal body is crying. Mm. We're not able to understand what it's saying. Mm. So first is awareness about what your body is trying to tell you. Mm. Once you're aware, you need to take an action. Mm. Without the thought of an outcome. All of us are caught in not wanting to fail. Mm. But failure is a stepping stone to every success. A little child doesn't think falling down is failure. This is very scary as well as interesting and uh, uh, I, you know before any change it's difficult to understand that we are not ready for it and yet to take a plunge. And if you're not ready for it be authentic to yourself and say okay. I'm not ready for it. Hmm. And how about getting comfortable with that? Yes. I'm not ready to come out of the cage. Mm -hmm. I find cage comfortable. The mm -hmm. door is open. Maybe I don't have to take all the steps today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but be honest to yourself. That is also mm -hmm. freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the bigger freedom. Yeah. Nobody is asking you to come out of the cage if that's not comfortable, if that's not safe. Mm -hmm. But till you do not signal to your body that you're safe, your healing will not start. Mm -hmm. If you are in the fight mode, that means you're constantly fighting, constantly fighting, constantly fighting. And what are the words we use? I mean, in, in Hindi song, is in, if you look at it, they talk about life being a battlefield. Mm. You're not on a battlefield, you're living life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Live life, making those failures normal like a little child does. Mm. You may make 100 attempts and a failure, like I said, you will fall, it will not work out. So what? Next day will start again. Mm. And maybe you, you've stopped crying and you've frozen. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're constantly exiting out of the, of the zone. Mentally, physically, you're getting out of your house. Work has become your exit plan. Your success has become your exit plan. Mm -hmm. Your traveling becomes your exit plan. But in your mind, you're still caged. The real exit happens and you're calm in your mind and you say, you know, wherever I am, mm. I'm safe. Mm. To reach that state, it takes time. It's work. And most of us think that by eating just the tablet, 
I'm not saying they're doing bad. They really are needed. But just by eating the tablet and not changing your lifestyle, because most of these are lifestyle, mm. this is the kind of style, the way you want to live your life. Mm. Very frustrated, very unhappy, full of anxiety. Then you cannot, you're not telling your body, I'm safe. Your body cannot complete the healing. And so these become chronic diseases. So is it like, you know, body is trying to recover. It takes it uh, space in, it takes its space in recovery. And then something happens and it goes back to where it started. Is Absolutely. It, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You come up till the door of the cage, you even walk out four steps. Okay. Hmm. So then you went out and someone said, yeah, Ooh. very interesting. Yes. And you walk back again. Mm. And then you validate it. See, I told you it's not safe going out. And then we find all the reasons for it to be true. But we ignore the reasons that that is otherwise. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like we are looking for the proof to make it happen. If only we could listen and not look for proof. Because looking for proof is at conscious level. Finding your solutions are at subconscious level, at a hypnotic level. You solve things while sleeping. We don't sleep anymore. This is You true. solve things yes. while sitting down with your family members and laughing and having your food. Yes. We don't do that anymore. Yes. Sit Absolutely. with our mobiles. There's Absolutely. frustration. There are timelines not met. So we eat yeah. food with all the crudeness. Mm. We we live our life as if it's a battlefield. Nobody heals on a battlefield. Have you ever seen anyone resting on a battlefield? Mm. Yeah. And the traumas that are going on in generations are carried again and 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 again. So how it's can not... one come out of such trauma that happens through generations? First, you need to identify the pattern that's going on. Mm -hmm. And then there are many ways to deal with it. Family constellation is one way. Shadow constellation is one way to understand what's the shadow side of you. What's the part of you that's not letting you connect? You asked me about relationships. Maybe mm -hmm. someone's father didn't get along with his father. And then you don't get along with your father. You can't even understand why. And then your son grows big or daughter grows big and can't get along with their father. It's history repeating again. Mm -hmm. But what did we learn from it? Why is it in one house people didn't educate themselves and it's okay? Mm -hmm. And everybody seems to be uneducated. Whereas in the other house, education seems to be of prime importance. If they were not educated, God, sky would fall down. Yes. It's mm. so mm. Why is it in one house, if you didn't have enough money, you are nobody. And when you are nobody, your body becomes like a nobody. Your bones actually start going to osteoporosis. <laughs> This is interesting. Yes. Wow. This is this is the way body will listen to the conversations. Yeah. On the dining table, conversations that you pay, we as parents have given our children. Conversations that children are having among each other. Hmm. Conversations that have been going on for years. And the folk stories that have been told, you know, you should be like Ram. You should be like Sita. You should be like... You yeah. know what I'm getting. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there are molds. There are models that are created for us mm -hmm. of right and wrong. Be, and we yeah. get lost. Yeah. And I, I like, think many times we don't even understand that we are stuck there. I don't think we understand we are stuck there. Yes. Mm -hmm. My father said to me before he died, 
दिल लगा के काम करना आई सेट वेरी प्राउडली इन फ्रंट ऑफ माई हजबेंड टू सम एंड वेरी लविंगली ही लुक एट मी एंड सेट आई अंडरस्टैंड बट जो लोग यहाँ हैं वो काम से ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है उनके साथ भी टाइम बिताना ये पापा ने नहीं बताया hmm. Sometimes we are carrying these indirect hypnotic commands within our psyche, and we continue to do things. Give you another example. I was doing my art practitioner's course, mm. and my teacher asked me something, and that was so simple. And I was supposed to make a song for what was going on, and I said, instead of saying a song, I said, "Love ke liye kuch bhi karega." Mm. She looked at me and said, "Kuch bhi." That's all she said. That opened up my entire world. Yeah. Sometimes, Jane, it is not big things that matter. Yeah. It is the very minute understandings that matter more than anything else. And your understanding is what creates your world. And you then use words to describe your world. and you describe your parents experiences with pride or with sadness and you carry it to your children and they carry it to their children my grandfather was given a prize so i must also get it kidhar likha hai where is it written that you to live his life but at the same time you be surprised I started work a lot of work from Czech Republic. My grandfather had started his work from Czech Czech Republic, Is and I didn't even know it. Yes, <laughs> I mean, of course, in those times it was called Czechoslovakia because yeah. Slovak and Czech were one land uh, country. Yeah. But sometimes you will find that you are living your ancestors' life, and even and you had no started, idea that he started no, this. No. Wow, this is interesting. Now I need to ask myself, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And these are the questions. If we can get answers to, why am I behaving in a certain way? Hmm. I mean, I know my grandmother. When I started researching, I realized my grandmother was interested in naturopathy. Hmm. What's the chance that I'm doing meta health or I'm looking at emotional yeah. stuff? some ancestors somewhere laid a framework for it you mm-hmm. think you came here no someone laid a framework of your conflicts as well as as well of your successes mm-hmm. you just followed that how do you say a mold mm-hmm. we don't even realize that we're staying in a mold we even look like them yes we behave like our parent i know so many children who never met their parents and yet if you were to go back and compare them to their parent mm. they would have traces of their parents behavior in them what mm. creates that those are dominating behaviors which are going to help you to survive so whatever we think are conflicts could it be possible that they were our survival they were our survival uh way they that's the way we survived our life or uh, ancestors survived it that was like let's say somebody is collecting yeah even what we collect jane okay like even what we collect like somebody collecting polythen bags could it okay. be that they all right okay could that be that they were talking about the time in which those polythen bags had a status right. symbol of you know okay. it's it's come from outside the country it meant something could mm. it be that that they were collecting things which made them like i i remember i'm always collecting clothes mm why is that some ancestors somewhere probably didn't have enough clothes okay and was made to look really bad i am overcompensating yeah. for something that wasn't available and you are not even aware about it It no i'm not in awareness mm. no we are not in awareness yeah so we are coming from a consciousness that we don't even know that we don't know mm. so the three parts i know that my name is anu 
Yeah. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. But I don't even know that I don't know that I am behaving exactly like my ancestor. Mm. So you need to research back and see what's really happening. We have written so much about our lives, but if we can go back into our family trees, go back and really try to understand our ancestors, really try understanding that children who were thrown out of the family, children who were absorbed back into the family, the property issues, they all made a difference in your health issues. Mm. Even collecting uh, a lot of weight around us. Mm. You want to look big. Okay, that's interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, It's a way of protecting yeah. oneself. Yes. What happens to a child who's, who's got touched in a wrong way as a child? Mm. She thinks, oh, her parent would have been a big child, person who could have come and protected her. She becomes big so that nobody comes close to her. Mm. Because each case is very individual. I'm just giving you a yes, very yes. general it's, it's quite deep and I think this session has opened up mind about how to look at your body in much uh, deeper sense. And I think it's not just body. It's also about uh, how we talk to our body. What are the conversations that we have about us, even our ancestors, and all the surrounding that 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 is uh, you know influencing us. So thank you that you initiated all of us listeners to look at life with a different perspective, deeper view, maybe find something that that can change us that can help us be better than what we are now so thank you so much anu i i'm sure that uh, all those who are listening uh, will have some more introspection in their life and uh, please connect with anu Dr. Anu, she is very popular in Meta Health. If you just type Dr. Anu Mehta, Meta Health, you will find list of Google pages by her name. So you don't even you know need to struggle to find her. Um, thank you, thank you. I I am really thankful to you for being with us and sharing your knowledge and life. Thank you, Jane. And before I leave, I'm just going to say the last yes, that I really please. want to share. Yes, please. If for a minute we can look at our ribs, mm -hmm. which is like a cage in which yes. our heart is there. Mm -hmm. I believe the day the ribs can open up and look like the wings. If look they, like? The ribs, they'll look like the wings Ah, and the heart okay. is actually not caged inside the rib cage. When we learn to love and communicate with all our heart, without any ribs, without any protection, without because it's safe to do so. Yes. And when this rib cage opens and it, it kind of expands like this, it'll look like the angel wings, we will really know how to fly. We'll really know oh. what it means to love unconditionally. Thank you very much, Jane. This is so I'm beautiful. Really, really, really Thank grateful. You. Thank you. I I have lot to process. Currently, I'm in a state where I have. First of all, I have many questions, but I think we need to, you know, uh, keep our brain processing with what we have right now. And we would like to invite you once again uh, for one more session. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here, listening to us. You can follow us on Facebook at EdUnior uh, page. And uh, you can also 
uh, look at us for other videos in Edunair Connect and find such interesting topic. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. I, I stopped one minute Facebook live, but I need to check whether I have stopped it or not. The recording is